Yeah, Richard Childress just walked through here with a wrench. They're getting ready on the next stop. They're going to change the chassis a little bit on Earnhardt. Try to make him a little faster so we can maybe catch up with Jeff Bodine. Dale Earnhardt currently running in fourth position behind Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, and Jeff Bodine as 125 laps have been completed. Again, we're looking for the halfway challenge at lap number 184. And there is the number uh, six car of Mark Martin putting a lap on Jack Pennington. Right in front of him, of course, the 94, Sterling Marlin running in second place. Sterling Marlin trailing Jeff Bodine. And we'll try to show you the interval that uh, is between the first and second place cars. And there you can see it is almost a uh, full straightaway now separating at least half a straightaway separating first and second position showed. So Jeff Bodine, who was the leader of uh, the impulse or rather for this race, finds himself as a leader and going for $15,200 in Unical bonus money. Bob, we mentioned that there are 20 cars in the lead lap. Of course, Jeff Bodine leading second, Sterling Marlin. Third is Mark Martin. Fourth, Dale Earnhardt. Bill Elliott has moved up to fifth. In sixth place is Morgan Shepard. Sep seventh now has dropped back. Rick Wilson, eighth, Davey Allison, Harry Gant is ninth, and in tenth place is Michael Walter. Brett Bodine is 11th, Ricky Rudd 12th, Ken Slater 13th, Darren Walter is 14th, Dick Trickle is 15th, Bobby Hillen 16th, Terry Labonte 17th, Rob Moroso 18th, Jimmy Spencer 19th, and Richard Petty the 20th place car. And those 20 cars are still on the lead lap with Jeff Bodine. Glad you could join us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon from Darlington, South Carolina. In the market for a new trucker van? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday save big at the Daytona Beach. Currently, a four driven by Jeff Bodine is the leader of our race. 131 laps completed. The halfway point is 184. Here is the number nine car of Bill Elliott the 15 of Morgan Shepard and now we see fifth and sixth position here as Bill Elliott is in the ninth place. Let's go to Dick Bergman who's with the crew chief on Elliott's car. The crew chief is Mike B. Mike you started all the way back in 17th. Didn't give yourself much chance today but here you are in fifth. What have you done to get this thing running so well? Well this morning I changed all the shocks and springs you know and changed the weight around a little bit you know. Yes they even we were terrible. Yeah, I mean, we was ready to shoot ourselves, you know. We didn't get a lot of sleep last night because we tried to think of everything in the world to do. So I come in this morning, and I told Bill, I said, you know, we don't have nothing to lose and everything to gain. We gambled on it, you know. I pretty much just changed everything. We've been conservative all year, you know. And that wasn't getting us nowhere. This is the car with Rick Rockingham, all the boys in the shop. They worked real hard to get here with this car after we got beat so bad at Atlanta, you know. We just said, heck, we're going to get it done. So uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Bill, he, he hasn't said nothing, so I think he's okay. This is another team struggling with a front steer car that they're not terribly used to. Elliott has done extremely well here at Darlington, only finishing out of the top ten twice in his entire career. Dick, I think he made a good, smart move while you were talking to Mike Beam. He just moved over to the inside and let Morgan Shepard and Davey Allison go around. He says, this is not the point of the race that I want to be out here racing hard, these guys. He can keep up with them, so he said, I'm just going to let them go ahead and run their pace, and I'll run mine. Boy, look at this battle for a second. It has really tightened up, and three cars are in contention for that second position. On the left is the 94 of Sterling Marlin. Then comes the red maroon car of Mark Martin, and then the black number three of Dale Earnhardt. Second, third, and fourth. These guys are chasing down Jeff Bodine, the leader. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Steve Meal. Well, Steve is watching his driver, Mark Martin, who's getting a little quicker and a little quicker. Steve, you guys will keep working on the chassis. What have you been doing to the car? We started real tight. We like to make sure Mark's got these radial tires up under him real good. And you know, everything's working fine. We're just a little bit too tight. So as the race goes on, he'll get the feeling better. We're steady, steady, loosening them up. So as we go on, we should run faster. Maybe we'll have something for him. That 11 is awful sound right now. They're pretty pleased right now. Mark continues to climb. He was fifth, fourth, and now he's running third, trying to work over the Sterling Marlin car. And he is right on Sterling Marlin's bumper. Now looks to the high side of the racetrack between turns one and two, but stays in that third position behind Sterling Marlin. You know, fellas, we never did answer Jerry's question about uh, 
the car number 94, Steve Lloyd, the crew chief on it, said that they were running a little higher gear than some of the others. And Jerry asked the question, what will that do as the race goes on and the track gets a little bit slicker? Benny, I think that it'll help it. Now, I always ran a little higher gear here than most other people. Of course, I only had one win on this racetrack. But uh, as the track got slicker, the high gear helped. Well, it will happen if he has to move up on the racetrack. Ooh, they oh. almost touched, or did they touch? Trying as Martin Martin trying to get by Sterling. If Sterling has to move up on the racetrack, it will help him because he certainly will not turn too many RPM. When he runs a little less gear, that means he's not turning quite the RPM that his competitors is. You know how would they know his competitors are? How would they know that? Do they know what everybody else is running for gear? You suppose? I don't know. I expect that's a guess. While we watch second, third, and fourth position here, we'll tell you that Davy Allison has moved into fifth. Look at Earnhardt right up against the wall. Things are pretty much stabilized now for second, third, and fourth since Mark Martin attempted that pass. So Marlon remains in second, Mark Martin in third, Dale Earnhardt in fourth, Davey Allison in fifth position, and there is the leader of the Trans-South 500 at the moment, Jeff Bodine. Back with more live action after this. Driver who is on the move is Davey Allison in car number 28. There you can see that the three car of Earnhardt has moved into second, third is Sterling Marlin. Make that to fourth is Sterling Marlin, and fifth is Davey Allison. Second place belongs to Mark Martin. Okay, I was going to tell you Mark Martin was in second place. That's all I wanted to do. Okay. And here's Davey Allison going to try to go on by on the outside as Sterling Marlin moves to the inside of the track. There's Morgan Shepard in car number 15. He might try to make the pass, too. Boy, that takes a lot of nerve to drive up on the outside of someone coming off the second corner because you wonder, does he know that I'm here? Is he sure, Surely he knows I'm here. But most of the time, he don't know you there. I believe the handle's gone away on Sterling Marlin's car a little bit. While we were in commercial, we did have a shuffle of positions, and here's how it happened. Now, remember, Sterling was in second when we went away from commercial, and here's how Mark Martin got around, and also how Dale Earnhardt was able to pass Sterling Marlin. This is coming off the second corner, and all day we've been watching the 94 car run right on the bottom of the racetrack in one and two he was high that time and not getting a good grip at all mark martin got by and he had the slow going in turn three so earnhardt got the position and took third of play third away from him davy allison has had a fine run here now remember this guy has finished second and third in the last two trans south 500 let's go down and talk to uh, robert yates well, Robert Gates is the car owner, he's the motor builder, he's just about everything, he's the crew chief on this team. Now, you guys were a lap down early as a result of that pit stop. Here you are all the way back up in the top five. Can you do anything with Bodine? Well, uh, we're, we're a couple tenths or two or three tenths quicker than he is right now, and uh, we don't know how hard he's running because he is out front. We're running him down, the car's running real good, and I uh, hope this uh, test go have us full done for to hang together here one time. How hard are you running? Uh, real good. <laughs> he's not going to tell us how hard he's running, but I bet he's running real hard. Boy, we got some tight action on the racetrack. Morgan Shepard and Sterling Marlin almost came together. And while we watched this action on the track, the number 20 car of Rob Barroso had a brush with a second turn wall. He came in and changed tires while running at 16th, and Barroso is back out on the racetrack. You said they get was close action. I do believe they got together over there. Yeah, course. I think they did too. I think they touched. see Bill Elliott back pulled back up on the back of Morgan Shepard. I would say that a little bit ago when Bill Elliott moved over that those guys had gotten up behind him and got his car loose and moved up so close to him they took the air off of his car. His car was just extremely loose so he had to back off let his tires cool off and let those fellas go. Let's uh, go back and take a look at it in replay once again and we'll maybe be able to determine whether or not they did touch. We'll get to that just as soon as we can. Shepard will try the outside again, perhaps. Well, they saw Mark Martin do that a little bit earlier, and now it's going to work for him. A Sterling gives him running room, moves to the inside, and takes 